Audrey and I had a lot, a lot of things we agreed on. I mean, yeah. we had some philosophical differences, but you know, we tended to focus on what do we need to do for the, to keep the city moving. Uh, Doug and I have philosophical differences, sure, but that never got in the way. You and I have philosophical city. differences, well, but that's because you're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but, but they, they were available, Fred. I mm -hmm. could call up Richard Castaldi. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, going through the entire, mm -hmm. and you know, she came in to a restaurant the other night, and she being, uh, I'm sorry, Ingrid Turner uh -huh. came into it, and I had to be introduced to her because I didn't know who she was. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, well, I think she, you yeah. know, she she came in there new. She didn't have a lot of experience, and uh, uh, it took her a while to get get her feet on the ground, I guess. Uh, um, you know, I, I don't have the same level of communication there that I've had, clearly had with Doug. But it's here. essential. It should be. It should be. Um, you know, there are times, like I say, maybe we got spoiled with some of the previous things, but like I say, it was not at all uncommon for Doug to pick up the phone and say, hey, Paul, oh, yeah. what do you got here? Or for me to call and say, and if he didn't answer, yeah. he'd, he'd call you right back. Uh, you know, the school board situation is the same. You ever hear from your school board member? No. No, never. Um, actually, we get we get we get a fairly decent relationship from some of the other folks on the board. Oh, do you really? Yeah, because uh, some of the challenges that have come up, obviously, are boundary issues, because you know, and this goes back to the planning discussion you talked about earlier. Um, the county will make planning decisions, and then if it artificially or negatively or adversely affects the school system, instead of looking at it from a long plan and say, look, these are where we need to make school changes they'll just shift the boundaries. It's easier to shift boundaries and move kids around yeah. than it is to do the anticipated oh. need for construction. Yeah. Like, I mean, it is no secret that I have been lobbying for the last five, six years for a second high school in the city. Clearly, we've demonstrated the need for a Absolutely. second high school. We were close at one time. We, we, were, we were up on the list. We should have been the last one that was built down yeah. at Wise, and we got uh, there's probably a more elegant way to say that, but shafted is, you know. No, I think covered. that's perfect. I like We that. should have been that, that site. But instead, the, the county school board moved it to, uh, moved and constructed the Wising. Uh, and now they're going to be shifting boundaries to move yeah. more people down there. Um, but, and now the Bowie School doesn't even show up in the county's budget anymore. I know. And to me, that, that's the outrage. And meanwhile, we're having these great big fights at Bowie High School. <laughs> well, you've got a building there that was designed so to accommodate 12, 1,400 kids. Yeah. Now they've got 32, 3,400 kids, and they're in two different buildings. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I will tell you, I'm a big fan of Jane Spence, the principal there. She does an incredible job given the challenges that she has. they got some good faculty there. There are a lot of incredibly bright students there. Uh, and some that are just going to, you know, blow some college away when they get there. Um, and, you know, the, they got some kids that are, you know, on yeah, the other end. they're but, idiots. There, but sure. the, uh, the, the bulk of the students there want to be there, and they want to learn, and they want to do well. Uh, Ms. Spence, the, Mrs. Spence, the principal there, I think clearly has a focus on what they need to do to move to the next step. And uh, she brings a, a pretty strong faculty together to do that. Uh, but when you have a student population in a building designed for 12 or 1400 it's got 1200 more than that and they tell me now that that is the largest school population school high school population in the state is that right yeah um, and so what we have suggested that's time just a, and that's time trouble again it's is inevitably the, the county owns this site down Mitchellville Road it's like 40 acres yeah we don't need another mega high school no we what would be nice is a strong academic high school yeah. that would accommodate maybe, you know, 1,000, 12, 1,400 right. students, take the burden off of the existing Bowie High School, have the two high schools complement each other, uh, have them both mm. focused on getting kids in, providing the opportunities for them, and, and then moving them along. Sounds good, Fred, though, but, but it's you, also wishful I can't, thinking. We, that I can't, we can't do that on our own here. No, you can't. That is clearly a function of the county and the state, and clearly it, it has not obviously been the priority of the no. county for the long for a long time no and uh that i don't think much in buoy is a priority except <laughs> gathering our taxes yeah and spending well, them on non-essentials <laughs> non well like i say the, the concern i have right now is bringing up the staff numbers at the at the fire ems station yeah um i've had the opportunity to sit down and talk to a lot of our own volunteer folks who are very very bright and 
dedicated, and to talk to the to the um, uh, the page staff, the the, the uh, uh, county folk. Uh, they have they have convinced me now that the current county approach of assigning staff based on the facility as opposed to the apparatus in that facility yeah. is what what hurts. Right now, the county assigns four four firefighters slash EMTs to a building. Okay. Now, if you take the fire truck out, there's nobody there to there's drive the ambulance. There. If you take the ambulance yeah. out, you take two of the four people, you, you can't take the fire truck out without four people. So it would seem to me that although it's frightfully expensive to add those okay. extra people, that's where we have to go. We're down to four minutes. And now before we do that, I just want to get your succinct comments on uh, are you encouraged or are you skeptical or are you just waiting to see what happens with the current campaign of candidates? Um, I think there are some some good candidates out there and I think they're they're talking the right thing that you know uh, there are a couple of folks I'm paying a lot of attention to in the county executive race two minutes uh, that I think are talking clearly about looking down the road beyond the next two years beyond the next four years and maybe adopting the buoy model of doing long-term contingency plan. Boy, you're an optimist, aren't you? I, well, you know, look at the alternative. <laughs> um, you know, I, I told somebody one of my favorite quotes is one I just recently saw that Einstein said that there are only two things infinite in this, wor in this world. One is the universe and the other is the capacity for human stupidity. <laughs> I like that one. That's, that's excellent. Yeah. Now, I, I, on to, with two minutes left, I want to compliment you on the Memorial Day parade. That was uh -huh. one fiasco. Are you going to yeah. have that... <laughs> Uh, take care of that mess so uh, the next time that, we have a Memorial well, you Day can parade? You can rest assured. I've already had a couple of candid conversations with some folks. And if you saw my comment in the paper, I, I took did, the, I I took the liked hit for it. that. I liked it. And it was, it was I mean, because, you know, it's my responsibility at the yeah, end of the yeah, day. Yeah. And uh, we invited some folks or we agreed to put people in I had absolutely no idea that some of these people were going to bring two or three hundred people. Oh, it was horrible. That was clearly an abuse of our hospitality. Total abuse. And uh, it not only slowed the parade well, down. Well, what these people don't realize, especially the sheriff, he had people screaming at him, there's no way we're going to vote for well, you. I did, <laughs> I did hear a lot of critical observations coming from people. Cause, and it got to one point where I, uh, I left the reviewing stand and walked down to by the community stand and told people to move or get out of the parade. Good for and, you. Uh, Good for you. I mean, it got the Here's so, Steny Hoyer, one of the most powerful politicians in the country. Showed up with, with a with a an aide and a security <laughs> guy yeah, and, and a, two or three people yeah. walk the entire parade. And he was sixty fourth yeah. in placement. Oh, I didn't know where he was in the 64th. parade. Sixty fourth. Uh, <laughs> that 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 probably should not have well, been. I mean we'll my, all... my sense is you put the veterans and stuff up front. Well that's a and, class politician. But yeah, here's a guy who walked the whole parade with a group of yeah, three or four people. The House Majority Leader. Yeah, and arguably, like I say, one of the yeah. top ten political figures in this country. Well, with that, Mr. Mayor, I thank you very much. I think we have a I've jovial. Been I'm going to be released now. You're going to be released. On, it is amazing how yeah. it goes by so quickly. Yeah. Hope you'll come on again as uh, uh, pleased to as things Maybe either next deteriorate time. or uh, get better. <laughs> well, anything thank to raise, you very raise much. your ratings. And thank you, viewers, uh, for watching. And we'll see you again next week.